Salutations at the Lotus Feet of Bhagwan. Fellow devotees of Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba, today marks the completion of six years since Mahasamadhi took place. It's a day of remembrance, a day on which we solemnly recall the historic time that Swami spent in this place and the many leelas and great acts of service that Swami did to humanity. Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba took birth in this place, Puttaparthi, a poor, remote, backward village, on the 23rd of November, 1926. At the young age of 14, he announced to the world that he did not belong to any family and yet come to redeem the world. He expressed that the whole of humanity was his family, and it made no difference to him whether his devotees belonged to any particular religion, place, country, or gender. The ancient Indian philosophical idea of Vasudeva Kutumbakam was clearly embodied in the declaration made by Bhagwan Baba in 1940. Baba led his whole life in keeping with this declaration till the time of his Mahasamadhi on the 24th of April, 2011. He walked the talk and in every possible way demonstrated that his thoughts, words and deeds were in unison. In the initial years, due to the inaccessibility of Puttaparthi, not many people visited Swami, but later, a large number of devotees, rich and poor, rulers and the ruled, old and young alike, found solace in Swami. By early 1950s, Swami had travelled to many places in South India. Prashanti Nilayam started taking shape with the construction of the Mandir. Baba continued to live in Prashantinilayam and took a direct interest in the development of the ashram and also the village of Puttaparthi. He personally cleared the plans for the mandir and other buildings and monitored their construction. It was easily accessible to his devotees and repeatedly asserted in private conversations, interviews, and in his innumerable discourses, that Prashanti Nilayam was his home and place and continued to stay here according to the promise given to Mother Ishwarama. He also declared that Prashanti Nilayam would become a spiritual center and people from all walks of life and from all over the world would come flocking to Prashanti Nilayam for his darshan, seeking solace and spiritual upliftment. He often said that only if he willed could a devotee come for his darshan at Prashanti Nilayam. The dominant tone in his discourses was service to humanity. He stressed empathy for fellow beings as constituting the foundation for spiritual progress. Empathy must be translated into action by selfless service, or as Swami called it, seva. In many of his discourses, Swami exhorted the devotees to follow the path of service for their spiritual elevation. Swami laid great emphasis on character building through the process of value-based education. He expressed that children and young adults had to be shown the correct path and for this purpose he distilled the wisdom of the scriptures of every major religion in the world into five principles, namely Satya, Truth, Dharma, Right Conduct, Shanti, peace, prema, love, 
and ahimsa, non-violence. He conveyed the essential unity of all religions and in fact gave us the logo of a pillar showing the symbol of major religions in each of the five faces of the pillar. In order to enable his devotees to progress on the spiritual path, Swami provided many opportunities by setting up many institutions and trusts, such as the Sri Satisai Central Trust, Sri Satisai Trust in the states of Maharashtra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Punjab and Haryana, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, West Bengal, and the Northeast. All these trusts are public charitable trusts, and Swami was the founder trustee, and in many cases, the sole trustee. Councils of management were set up for each of these trusts by Swami with the task of attending to daily administration of the trust in accordance with Swami's directions. The objects of these public charitable trusts were education, medical relief, charity and relief of the poor. The central trust of which Swami was the sole trustee from the time it was formed in 1972 till 2010, except for a brief period when Swami appointed a co-trustee, also has objects similar to the state trust. Apart from the above central and state trust, Swami also directly founded the Sri Satyasai Medical Trust and the Sri Satyasai Institute of Higher Learning Trust. Both these are public charitable trusts. Eminent personalities like the former Chief Justice of India, Justice P. N. Bhagavati, and Sri N. A. Palkiwala, senior advocate and an eminent jurist, who was also the Indian ambassador to the United States of America, were trustees of the Sri Satyasai Institute of Higher Learning Trust. All these trusts were vehicles used by Swami to provide an avenue of service where Swami propagated as the means to move Godward. The earliest medical relief activity was started by Swami in the early 1950s in Puttaparthi by setting up a general hospital which has grown over the years. This hospital came into existence in 1956. Later, in 1991, the original building was expanded to house more departments. This was expanded still further with a new modern building which was inaugurated on 23rd October 2015. In the year 1991, a super speciality hospital was set up in Puttaparthi. The main departments being cardiology and cardiothoracic surgery, besides urology, ophthalmology, and orthopedics. This hospital was inaugurated by the then Prime Minister of India, Sri P. V. Narsimharao, in the immediate divine presence of Bhagwan. The best quality medical care, on par with the most modern medical facilities available in the world, is being provided at no cost to the patient. It's worth noting that there is no discrimination of any kind in the selection of patients. Swami proved his skeptics wrong by inaugurating the hospital in less than one year from the date of his announcement. Swami set up another super speciality hospital at Whitefield near Bangalore in the year 2001. The main departments in this hospital 
are cardiology, cardiac surgery, neurology, and neurosurgery. This hospital was inaugurated by the then Prime Minister of India, Sri A.B. Vajpayee, in the immediate divine presence of Bhagwan. Sri S.M. Krishna, Chief Minister of Karnataka, Sri Vilas Rao Deshmukh, Chief Minister of Maharashtra, and Srimati Rama Devi, the Governor of Karnataka, Chandra Babu Naidu, Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, were also there. This hospital replicated the model of the super speciality hospital at Puttaparthi and has been providing most modern treatment free of cost to all the patients. For administrative reasons, all the medical relief activities carried on by the Satyasai Medical Trust were taken over and transferred to the Sri Satyasai Central Trust in June 2010. All the medical relief activities in the two super speciality hospitals and the two general hospitals are being provided by the Sri Satyasai Central Trust. The general hospital at Whitefield, which was running in the premises belonging to Sri Satyasai Health and Education Trust, was shifted to the premises of the Sri Satyasai Institute of Higher Medical Sciences, Whitefield, on 6th July 2016 for administrative convenience. Let me mention here about the educational institutions. Bhagwan had set up a women's college at Anantapur in 1969. The college was inaugurated by the then President of India, Sri V. V. Giri. Later in 1970, Swami set up the first men's campus at Whitefield. While the Anantapur Women's College was affiliated to Sri Venkateshwara University, the Whitefield College was affiliated to the Bangalore University. The second men's college was set up by Bhagwan at Puttaparthi in 1979, which is affiliated to Sri Venkateshwara University. In 1981, the two colleges at Anantapur and Puttaparthi became campuses when the Sri Satyasai Institute of Higher Learning was set up as a deemed to be university by notification issued by the Government of India and the University Grants Commission Act. In 1982, the then college at Whitefield was brought under the jurisdiction of Sri Satyasai Institute of Higher Learning. The fourth campus at Mudanahalli started functioning in 2012. The deemed university is a residential university. Bhagwan was the first chancellor of the deemed university. He was also the chairman of the board of trustees for the Sri Satyasai Institute of Higher Learning Trust. He held this position till his Mahasamadhi. In that role, he guided the institutions in their functioning and gave direction on all matters, academic and otherwise to successive vice-chancellors, registrars, academic staff, and most importantly, to the students. He interacted with the students regularly and kept a keen watch on every single student and guided them through their educational career. The Satyasai Institute of Higher Learning is now headed by a former Chief Justice of India Justice M. N. Venkatachalaya as its Chancellor and is now administered by a Board of Trustees. All the students in the Institute are provided education completely free of cost. The students or their parents only meet the cost of boarding, which is provided to all the students in all the campuses. The Mahasamadhi was a traumatic experience for devotees, trustees, and heads of institutions. 
And at a difficult time, by Swami's grace, the sixth Aradhana Mahotsav is being celebrated this year on the 24th of this month. Since Mahasamadhi to date, all of us have continued to feel blessed by Swami's grace and guidance. We are extremely happy to mention that the work in all institutions that Swami has started has been going on in exactly the same manner as they were before the Mahasamadhi. Though all of us and the multitude of devotees in India and abroad were overwhelmed by the enormity of the unforeseen event. In a very short time, due to Swami's grace, the devotees visiting Prashanti Niliyam to have the darshan of Swami at Mahasamadhi started to increase. Many of the devotees who were coming here were first-timers. Devotees have expressed they experience peace and find solace when they visit Prashanti Nilayam. The participation of devotees in the various programs organized by the Central Trust during Shankaranti, Shivaratri, Aradhana Mahotsavam, Guru Purnima, Dasara celebrations, and Swami's birthday celebrations. And, in, and during the Parthi Yatras organized by various state organizations and the district units, they have all steadily increased. A Swami's 91st birthday celebration, over 50,000 devotees witnessed the proceedings. And when Sai Kulanth Hall was overflowing, devotees were accommodated in Purnachandra Auditorium. But still, many occupied all the open space around these locations. All programs and events of university, like convocation, annual sports, drum saver, and of the hospital's anniversary celebrations have been going on with the same enthusiasm and ardor. On the Ugadi day in 2010, Swami decided to expand the board of trustees of the Satisai Central Trust and reconstitute its Council of Management. Five trustees were appointed and a four-member Council of Management was also formed. This was formally announced on the Ugadi Day by Justice P. N. Bhagavati as per the decision and directions of Swami. I have spoken at length regarding the medical facilities and the educational initiatives of Bhagwan, Now mention has to be made about disturbing deviation from good conduct after Bhagwan's Mahasamadhi by a few persons connected earlier with the institutions of Sri Satisai Central Trust. The late Sri Madhyal Narayan Bhatt of Alike village in the Bantwal Taluk of Dakshina Kannada of Karnataka, set up schools at Alike and Mudanahalli. He had set up Lok Seva Vrinda. He had an untimely death due to a road accident. People who were with him at that time had no means to run the schools. When they made a plea to Bhagwan, to help them in running the schools, Bhagwan set up the trust, Sri Satyasai Lok Seva Trust. This was in the year 1978 to manage these schools. Bhagwan was the sole trustee. At the time of Mahasamadhi, there was a board of management which worked under the guidance of Bhagwan Baba. After Mahasamadhi, there was a need to appoint trustees to see Satyasai Lok Seva Trust. The board of trustees of Sri Satyasai Central Trust 
after consultation, appointed the three following trustees to Sri Satisai Lok Seva Trust. Sri U. Gangadhar Bhatt, Sri B. R. Vasuki, and Sri S. S. Naganand are the first three trustees. The Sri Satisai Central Trust did not consider appointing Narsimha Murthy as a trustee at that time. He then came to Puttaparthi, met the trustees of Sri Satisai Central Trust, and pleaded that he be appointed as a trustee to Sri Satisai Lok Seva Trust. The Sri Satisai Central Trust then appointed him as a trustee. Some time after his appointment, he started claiming that Bhagwan was sending him messages to act in a particular manner, and that he was bound to do so. Soon thereafter, he propagated the idea of Bhagwan being in contact in a subtle form, enlisting the participation of Madhusudan Rao Naidu, a former student of Whitefield campus of Sri Satsai Institute of Higher Learning. As part of the increasing claims of Madhusudan Rao Naidu and Narsimha Murthy regarding receiving messages from Bhagwan, the former started giving discourses. Such discourses given by Madhusudan Rav Naidu were translated by Narsimha Murthy as if it were Bhagwan speaking. Progressively, such sharad had become even worse with Madhusudan Rav Naidu receiving Padanamaskar and letters imitating Bhagwan. The Sri Satisai Central Trust did not officially say anything against these questionable activities. However, a large number of devotees of Bhagwan were shocked by these questionable activities, desired that Sri Satisai Central Trust should respond. Due to the increasing misdeeds of Madhusudan Rao Naidu and Narsimha Murthy, it was thought that Sri Satisai Central Trust should bring to the notice of devotees the questionable claims made by them, and especially the brazen methods of raising money for what they claimed as activities to be undertaken under the direct instructions of Bhagwan. They have also indulged in using social media to project an impression of their doing many activities by appropriating the photographs of Swami's institutions, including hospitals, look-alike logos and color combinations in their material. This has led to some legal action taken against them in some countries. I mentioned earlier about the Sri Satisai Lok Seva Trust. Having secured the appointment as trustee of Sri Satisai Lok Seva Trust from Sri Satisai Central Trust, Narsimha Murthy had resorted to subverting the scheme of Sri Satisai Lok Seva Trust. Bhagwan had invested the power to appoint trustees of the Sri Satisai Lok Seva Trust to Sri Satisai Central Trust. In flagrant disobedience to Bhagwan's direction, Narsimha Murthy resorted to amending that provision illegally in the year 2012. Such amendment effected by him is untenable. Sri Satisai Central Trust felt that good counsel must be given to Narsimha Murthy so that he can desist from violation regarding the scheme of things. 
given by Bhagwan. Meetings were held by members of Sri Satyasai Central Trust with members of Sri Satyasai Lok Seva Trust in this regard. In spite of the best effort of the members of Sri Satyasai Central Trust, Narsimha Murthy did not revoke the illegal amendment. It is under these circumstances that Sri Satyasai Central Trust was forced to take a legal course and file a suit before the appropriate court. The two a suit is now pending in appeal before the district judge at Chikbalapur. In the recent past, two of the trustees of Sri Satyasai Lokseva Trust have suffered from pangs of conscience and have retraced their wrong path by filing proceedings in court by pointing out illegal activities of Narsimha Murthy and Kotari. They are admitted having been a party to the illegal amendment of the trust deed of Sri Satyasai Lokseva Trust. They have also asserted that Sri Madhusudan Rao Naidu is an imposter and a fraud. Some mention needs to be made about taking over of management of Sri Satyasai General Hospital at Whitefield by Bhagwan from Sri Srinivas. The Sri Satyasai General Hospital at Whitefield was set up by Srinivas's mother, a devotee. After her demise, Srinivas was managing that general hospital. However, as there was a perceived misrepresentation on the part of Srinivas about the Sri Satyasai General Hospital managed by him under the auspices of Sri Satyasai Health and Education Trust set up by his mother as part of Bhagwan's own trust. A direction was given by Bhagwan to hand over General Hospital at Whitefield to Sri Satyasai Medical Trust. This happened in August 2008. From then, the activities of Sri Satyasai General Hospital at Whitefield have been taken care of by Bhagwan through Sri Satyasai Central Trust. It was at the same time, due to this perceived misrepresentation by Srinivas, that Bhagwan had removed him from being a member of the managing committee of Sri Satyasai Central Trust. The general hospital which is located in the building of Sri Satyasai Health and Education Trust, set up by Srinivas's mother, was shifted to the premises of Sri Satyasai Institute of Higher Medical Sciences, Whitefield, in July 2016. There are many questionable activities of Narsimha Murthy and his partners. However, one need not go through the list of wrongdoings. But still, one aspect of high-handedness of Narsimha Murthy and his people needs to be mentioned. This relates to a building constructed by Sri Satyasai Central Trust under instructions of Bhagwan in 2009, child as Chancellor's resident. As part of the setting up of Muddhanali campus of Sri Satyasai Institute of Higher Learning, all expenditure was met by Bhagwan from Sri Satyasai Central Trust for this building. Since expenditure on the building was incurred by Sri Satyasai Central Trust, it was natural for Sri Satyasai Central Trust to take responsibility for custody and maintenance of the building. Accordingly, the security officer from Sri Satyasai Central Trust was sent to Mudanahalli to take charge of the building after Mahasamadhi. When security officer went there to carry out his duties, Narsimha Murthy and his people forcibly sent him out of the building, falsely claiming 
and it is the building of Sri Satya Sai Lok Seva Trust. This event is reflective of a continued rash behavior of Narasimha Murthy. It is rather painful to narrate these consistent deviations from good behavior by Narasimha Murthy and others associated with him. Our attention has been drawn to the recent claims of Narasimha Murthy in an address delivered by him, where he has gone to the extent of deriding the holy precincts of Bhagwan's Mahasamadhi at the Sai Kulvant Hall at Prashanti Nilayam by referring to it, quote unquote, as a place which need not be revered or visited in view of the presence of the subtle form, unquote, in the presence of Madhusudan Naidu at Muddanahalli in the Chancellor's residence building forcibly occupied by them and is now christened by them as Sai Anandam. I do not know whether this should be treated as a laughable matter or as something bordering on tragedy. If there is a place which is considered as the holiest by the devotees of Bhagwan, it's obviously the Bhagwan's Mahasamadhi at Prashanti Nilayam. It is to be noted by the devotees of Bhagwan that when it comes to resorting to collection of money, no rash statements is considered by Narsimha Murthy as beyond his bounds. It's our earnest prayer to Bhagwan to continue to bless his ever-expanding number of devotees who throng this place celebrating various auspicious and holy occasions, personal and institutional, and endow them with a sense of discrimination between good and bad, between right and wrong, so that all of us, the devotees, are able to reach the lotus feet at our appointed time without getting entrapped in the web and myth of so-called subtle body. May Swami's boundless love prevail and may He bless and guide the wrongdoers to follow the right path. The parable in the Holy Bible of the prodigal son teaches us that repentance is reciprocated by the Lord with love and compassion. May Swami bless all of us with peace and joy on this holy day of His sixth Aradhana Mahotsava. Sairam.